Hello, my name is Rob Jones uh, and I'm a genitourinary medical oncologist uh, working in Glasgow in the UK. Uh, now Atlantis is uh, is a platform trial, so in, fa in fact it's a, it amalgamates um, three different clinical trials. Uh, but the trial I was presenting was a randomization um, about a drug called cabozantinib. So this is patients with advanced bladder cancer, that is bladder cancer which is for the best part incurable. Um, and these are patients whose standard treatment at the time uh, would have been platinum-based combination chemotherapy, followed by a period of observation and then retreatment when the cancer starts to grow again. Um, so during in, in the trial, during chemotherapy, patients uh, underwent biomarker testing. Um, and at the end of their chemotherapy, if the chemotherapy was still working, patients would then be offered randomization into one of a suite of clinical trials according to the biomarker status. Uh, now, the cabozantinib randomization was actually for those patients who were negative for other positive selection biomarkers. Uh, so this was essentially a trial for all the others. Uh, so this is patients who've completed chemotherapy. They have still got benefit, that is uh, tumor shrinkage or ongoing tumor control at the end of chemotherapy. And instead of stopping treatment, which is the standard of care, um, they were randomized to receive either the drug cabozantinib or the placebo. Uh, cabozantinib is a multi-targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It's routinely used to treat some other cancers, in particular kidney cancer. Um, and there's some rationale as to why this drug would be beneficial in bladder cancer. Um, fundamentally, the primary endpoint of the trial was progression-free survival. And there was no difference between the end, between the two arms of the trial. Similarly, for the secondary endpoint of overall survival, there was no difference in the outcome. So, in summary, although the drug was actually well tolerated in this population, uh, there was no obvious benefit to taking cabozantinib as a maintenance treatment after completion of chemotherapy for advanced or inoperable urothelial bladder cancer. Um, uh, the trial was actually only a signal searching study, so the outcome of this trial really indicates that there would be no value in doing a subsequent phase three trial of monoagent cabozantinib in this setting. So of course, the, the, the term tyrosine kinase inhibitor encompasses a broad range of drug targets and of course drugs. Um, uh, cabozantinib is a multi-targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitor, but its principal target is the vascular endothelial growth factor receptors. It does have some activity against um, other targets, which may well be relevant in um, urothelial cancer, uh, principally Axel, MET and RET. Uh, but of course, the, in terms of the vascular endothelial growth factor receptors, uh, there's been a number of uh, randomized trials now exploring these drugs. Uh, and, and of course, drugs targeting the, the ligands um, uh, in, in advanced urothelial cancer in a number of different settings with, 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 with some mixed results, but predominantly actually these drugs have shown no benefit when in, in randomized trials in this disease. Uh, so I'm not sure that there's a much, much further rationale in exploring vascular endothelial growth factor receptor inhibitors in uh, urothelial bladder cancer. Of course, there are other um, uh, tyrosine kinases which are of great interest, in particular the fibroblast growth factor receptor. Uh, and of course, fibroblast growth factor receptor inhibitors are already a standard of care in molecularly selected patients in the United States. And we're still waiting on the results of, uh, of, of phase three trials um, uh, in that subgroup of patients with that particular um, targeted agent. If we're considering vascular endothelial growth factor targeted drugs, um, of course, we've seen a number of uh, randomized trials. Um, we've seen the recent failure of trials of a trial combining a potent uh, 
small molecule inhibitor, lenvatinib, given in combination with pembrolizumab in relapse disease. Uh, we're still waiting on an ongoing trial in the of, of that combination in the non cis platinum fit first line setting. Um, we have seen a positive trial of ramisirumab, which is an antibody, uh, but that was a trial which was conducted in patients who predominantly in the pre-immunotherapy era. Um, and although the trial was positive in terms of progression-free survival, there was no overall survival benefit. And so uh, that trial's not, that drug's not been adopted into standard practice in urothelial bladder cancer. So I, I, in, in summary, I'm not sure that there's a lot more future um, for vascular endothelial growth factor receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitors in this disease. There are some trials ongoing, particularly looking at that combination with immunotherapy, where there, of course, is a rationale as to why the VEGF inhibitor may potentiate for the activity of the immunotherapy. I've presented the results of one randomization within the, Atlant within the Atlantis trial, but remember the primary purpose of this trial was actually to address specific biomarker ta targeted therapies. And of course, we did uh, earlier in 2022, uh, we did present the results of a randomization between the PARP inhibitor, Rucaparib, and placebo in patients who are selected for a DNA repair deficiency type of biomarker. And that was a positive result. Um, so that suggested that there was a benefit. To, um, to, to, to giving a PARP inhibitor in the maintenance setting there. Um, as I said, this is just a signal sign finding study, so it doesn't change practice, but it does for the first time reveal uh, the possibility um, that PARP inhibitors may be effective for a subgroup of patients in urothelial cancer.